Hi, my name is Alfred Hayrapetyan, and I'm the product manager of NSK America. Today, I'm here to show you NSK's surgical micromotor called Surgic Pro. Surgic Pro comes in optic with LED light and non-optic models. We we'll begin with explaining the contents of the package and a quick review of their functions. Then we'll set it up and go over the basic operation of the machine. At the end, we'll touch on the maintenance and sterilization. Let's begin. The original contents of the package are as follows. AC power cord, foot control with cord, control unit, irrigation tube, coolant solution hanger post, optic or non-optic implant contraangle, micromotor with cord, Y connector, spare fuses, tube holder or clips, handpiece stand, internal spray nozzle, nozzle holder, cleaning wire, calibration drill, E-type spray nozzle, protection plug for motor, O-rings. These keys are available on the unit. The light key for off or low or high intensity of the light. Coolant key to select the coolant flow volume. Forward or reverse key to change the rotational direction of the micromotor. Gear key to select the matching ratio of the handpiece attachment. That's 20 to 1 for implant contraangle, for example. Memory key to memorize the program parameters set by the operator. Calibration key to calibrate a new attachment. Speed keys used to set the speed. Torque keys which are used to set the torque. Program keys used to select any of eight programs in each of eight implant systems. Important parts, micromotor cord jack, where you attach the micromotor cord. Irrigation pump to pump the saline to the burr. Coolant solution hanger post holder. AC electrical cord connection jack, main power switch, this is the fuse holder, and the foot control cord jack. Let's talk about the LCD display and how the buttons work. Speed, depending on the attachment, it can change with plus and minus to set the maximum speed. Implant system number that goes from 1 through 8. You press plus or minus at the same time. Torque graph. This is to display the amount of bone resistance applied to the drill. Torque, somewhere between 0 to 80 newton centimeter for implant. You can change by pressing plus or minus button. Light level, which works only for optic model. Coolant level can be set up to five different levels or no water at all. Forward or reverse direction. Gear ratio. Match it with the connected attachments. Like an implant case, we're going to choose 20 to 1. Program number. Stores the memory by pressing and holding the memory button. Let's talk about the foot control. Foot control has got three buttons and one pedal. Coolant flow button, which is blue. Program button, which is black. And forward or reverse button, which is green, and the speed control pedal. 
Let's set up the machine. This is how we set up the machine. We begin with connecting the motor cord by aligning the marks on the cord connector and the jack on the control unit. Push it until it clicks and pull it a bit to make sure it's locked in. To disconnect, you'll need to pull back the metal sleeve with one hand a little bit and pull the cord out with the other hand. Connect the foot control cord pretty much in the same way, except there's a secure lock nut to screw in. Connect the AC power cord. Install the irrigation tube. Make sure the lever of the pump is turned to open. Bend the tubing a little. Insert it inside the spindle. Make sure these two stoppers on the tubing stay outside the pump. This is the perfect location. Turn the lever back to close. Mount the hanger post and hang the saline. Use the needle at the end of the irrigation tube to insert the tubing to the saline bag. Attach the irrigation tube to the cord using seven holders or clips, which look like this. Please note that the irrigation tube is not autoclavable. Foot control. You can choose the programs, irrigation, and forward or reverse on the foot control during the operation to avoid touching the front panel by hand. Like I said, blue button is adjusting the coolant flow, the black one to run through eight preset programs, and the green button to switch between forward or reverse. The reverse gives a beep sound, by the way. Speed control pedal to run the motor. Please note that there are two ways to connect the external irrigation to the implant attachment depending on the type of the drill used in the operation. When we use the external spray only, just connect the end of the irrigation tube into the external spray nozzle, just like this. When we need dual irrigation, we should use the internal spray nozzle as well as the Y connector. Simply connect the Y connector into the main water supply tube. Then connect one of the water supply tubes to the external spray nozzle. The internal spray nozzle itself is mounted on the neck of the attachment using this black holder with a slight push. It clicks in this place. So the free end of the Y connector is connected to it like this. Internal spray and external spray. Again, we do this setup only when a dual irrigation is needed, as with certain drills. Insert the attachment into the motor and then twist till it clicks. Detach it by pulling it out. Optic and non-optic models have different locking concepts, but they pretty much work the same way as far as connecting and disconnecting, meaning they need to be locked into the motor and simply pulled out as described. Let's talk about the operation. Turn on the power. Select the desired preset program number by pressing the plus or minus on the control panel or the black button on the foot control. Verify the program details as far as torque and speed. Step on the speed control pedal in the middle of the foot control and the micromotor and the pump will start to run. If the drill is stuck in the bone by reaching the maximum set value of the torque, you'll get an error message with a beep sound. Tap on the speed pedal to clear the error. Press the green button on the foot control and change the rotational direction then step on the speed control pedal again to release the burr. 
Now change the rotational direction back to forward again. You're ready for another round of drilling. Calibration. Calibration is aligning the spec of a used or new attachment with the control unit to make sure the accurate amount of speed and torque is delivered through the attachment to the drill. As the hand pieces get old through normal wear and tear, or you want to use a new attachment with the motor, you'll need to perform calibration. Attach the 20 to 1 hand piece to the motor and insert the calibration drill into it. Press the calibration key for about 2 seconds. A long beep will be heard and the display will turn to calibration. No load calibration, torque display L, hold the motor in hand and press calibration. The drill will begin to rotate. Once this part is completed, there will be a beep sound and done will be displayed. Load calibration, torque display H. Insert the hexagon head of the drill into the calibration block. Hold the motor tightly so it won't move to the left or right. Press calibration. The drill will begin to rotate the round block rather heavily. Once this part is completed, there will be a beep sound and done will be displayed. Speed calibration. Remove the drill and leave the motor and the handpiece on the handpiece stand. Press the calibration button. The attachment will start working and rotate with no drill, of course. 8 seconds in slow, another 8 seconds in fast speed. Once this part is completed, there will be a beep sound. That's when the entire process is completed. Care and maintenance. After each operation, we need to lubricate the handpiece right away. The blood sucked into the internal gears can dry up in less than a minute. Here's how we do it. Cover the head of the attachment with a paper towel. Insert the E-type spray lubricant nozzle into the back of the handpiece. Shake the spray can a few times to mix the lubricant and alcohol. Hold it upright and spray the lubricant for two to three seconds. If necessary, repeat it a couple of times till a clear oil comes out of the head. The entire motor and its cord is autoclavable, so is the attachment, but the motor and the cord does not need to be lubricated. Place the handpiece and the micromotor in separate autoclave pouches and seal them before putting into autoclave. 